PS5's best new feature you already have. PS Plus Essential Extra and Premium has been on the market or in the PlayStation ecosystem, however you wanna put it, for around two months now. And honestly, leading up to it, I was really skeptical. I didn't think it was really going to land as well as Sony might have thought it would. But after using it for two months now, I really like this service. So for today's video, I thought it'd be fun if I dug into PlayStation Plus and talked about some things I like, some things I don't like, and where I think they could take it in the future. And before we jump into the video, if you're looking for any PlayStation accessories, whether it's a new controller, a new headset, even a monitor. I have a ton of this stuff linked down in the description and I would really appreciate it if you use those links because I get a little bit of a kickback because then I can afford more Best Buy Steelbook exclusive PS5 games that I'll buy, install, and never really play. So first up, let's talk about the service as a whole. If you were subscribing to PS Plus before, which I'm assuming you were because you have a PlayStation and you kind of need it to play online games, you were probably just transitioned over to PlayStation Plus Essential. This side of the service was one I was paying attention to super closely because it's the cheapest version of PlayStation Plus and I wanted to see if Sony was going to start taking away features and make them exclusive to extra and premium. For the most part, pretty much everything has stayed the same, which in my opinion is good. In June, June, PS Plus Essential users got God of War, which is one of the best games of all time. And honestly, I'm shocked Sony put it on the service because from one perspective, it's like free marketing for God of War Ragnarok to get people who haven't played God of War to see the series and really get into it. But on the other hand, who the hell hasn't played God of War already? In July, we got Crash 4, It's About Time, which is one of the best action platformers ever. I absolutely love this game and I could not have gone into it being more skeptical just because it wasn't Naughty Dog working on it and I grew up with Crash Bandicoot. So I was going in ready to hate it. But it was a really cool, not only nostalgic game, but a game that pushed the franchise forward and I'm super upset that we're not going to get another one. Oh, and we also got the Dark Pictures anthology, Man of Medan, which is the first game in that series. That is a perfect PS Plus game because it's one I think a lot of people were kind of shying away from because you don't really get a ton of replay value out of it. So it's like the perfect PS Plus essential game. And out of all the Dark Pictures anthology ones, I'd rank it towards the top. So that was a great month. And this month was honestly the best of the three. We got Little Nightmares, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, and Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is a next-gen game that has really incredible review scores across the board. And honestly, if you're someone who hasn't really gotten into the Yakuza franchise, like me, this is a great jumping on point because it's a new character and a new story in the series, and it's getting a sequel. I don't really know what else I could say about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 that hasn't already been said because it's absolutely phenomenal and just like with Crash 4, it's about time, I'm pretty bummed out it's not gonna get the three and four treatment as well. So from a games perspective, things haven't really changed all that much for PlayStation Plus Essential. I honestly think it's cool that Sony was on top of this and made sure that even though they were launching two new brackets or tiers of this service, they didn't leave the bottom tier hanging out to dry. And when you bump up to the extra tier of PS Plus, things get even better because even though Sony has made it very clear we're never gonna get first party exclusives as day one releases, we did get Stray, which if you compare it to the Xbox side, which got As Dusk Falls day one on Game Pass the same day, I think people were a lot more excited to check out Stray than they were that game. And that's kind of like the perfect game to launch in PS Plus Extra because it's an indie game, right? Like people buy certain indie games, like Celeste is a big one, I wanna say, What Remains of Edith Finch, Hotline Miami. There are standouts like Shovel Knight, uh, Hollow Knight, like these smaller games that really hit big, hit big, but there's plenty of other ones Ones that don't hit big at all, and then the studios completely go under. So when you have a situation like this, where Sony can give them a big chunk of money and also market the game to people a lot bigger than they would have otherwise, I think it's great because a lot more people will end up playing these games than they would otherwise. And on top of that, just this month alone, you got other games like Marvel's Avengers, Final Fantasy Remake Integrate on PS5, Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered, Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, and the Ezio Collection. So if you've never played any of those games before, subscribing to one month of PS Plus Extra gets you literally more games than you could possibly play within that one month period. And subscribing to PS Plus Extra, not even the top tier, gets you access to a big library of games 
games that includes PS5 games as well, like the one I just mentioned, Final Fantasy VII Intergrade, and also games like Returnal and Demon Souls, which if you're looking at the PS5 release slate as a whole, those are two of the best games available for this console. I literally have no idea why people don't go back and play Demon Souls. It's incredible and the remake is even better. Those are both examples of games that people didn't want to spend $70 on. So all you have to do is buy a month or two of PS Plus Extra and you've got two incredible experiences right there that you might not have wanted to take a chance on before. And then on top of that, you get access to an even bigger library of games that includes stuff like Control Ultimate Edition, Death Stranding Director's Cut, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrated, which I mentioned three times now, Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut, Ghost Runner, Greedfall, Guardians of the Galaxy, which was my game of the year last year, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Metro Exodus, Saints Row the Third Remastered, Wreckfest, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. All of these games are games that you get on PS5. They're not the PS4 versions. And on top of that, you also get a huge library of PS4 games. You're getting some great stuff like Blasphemous, Bloodborne, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Darksiders 3, Darksiders Genesis, Days Gone, Dead Cells, which is one of my favorite games of all time, Death Stranding Regular Edition, Detroit Become Human, Doom 2016, Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut on PS4, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition, Hotline Miami and Hotline Miami 2, Infamous First Light and Second Son, Injustice 2, Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Game of the Year Edition, Spider-Man Miles Morales, because both of those came out on PS4 as well. The list goes on and on. There are so, so many great games within this PS4 edition of PS Plus Extra that are honestly better than the vast majority of what you can find on Game Pass. Now, obviously there's a bunch of overlap there and I don't want to throw too much shade at Game Pass because if you have an Xbox, it is a great value because you get some great stuff like the Outer Worlds, at least the campaign of Halo Infinite, Psychonauts 2, and some other good first party games on top of a lot of third party games. But when you compare anything you get on Xbox Game Pass to getting stuff like Spider-Man Remastered, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Demon Souls, Returnal, some of the best reviewed games of all time. You can kind of see why I would say that PS Plus Extra is a better value so far than anything we've seen on Game Pass. And the two biggest games that were supposed to come to Game Pass this year, Redfall and Starfield, were delayed into 2023. Honestly, the biggest game that Game Pass is going to get this year has already been on PlayStation for an entire year. Year, and that is Deathloop. So yeah, you could say they're gonna get a patched version of it, which is kind of nice. And I'm sure they'll have some sort of DLC expansion or next gen true upgrade that you're going to get on the Series X day one that they might not add to the PS5. But still, it's crazy that we had an Xbox owned game on PlayStation for an entire year and it's a 10 out of 10 type of game. And I'll get to the biggest benefit of PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium after I talk about Premium, which is the most expensive tier here and honestly, the one that I think is the worst value. All right, so the cheapest way to buy into PS Plus Premium costs $120 a year. And with that, you get all the benefits of PS Plus Essential, which is the monthly games. You also get the benefits of PlayStation Plus Extra, which gives you the PS5 and PS4 game library. And then on top of that, you get demos for games. Sony calls them game trials, but like really they're demos. They're selling us demos, which I think is stupid. You also get PS Now, which is just called game streaming, and then you get access to a classic games library. Now, me personally, the classics library is why I would subscribe to PS Plus Premium. Uh, if you've watched the channel before, you know I really just don't like streaming games no matter what the device is. I have never seen a game that is genuinely better or as good being streamed than it is just playing it natively on a console, and I don't think we're going to see one of those for a very long time if not ever. I didn't subscribe to PlayStation Now before, and in the one month trial I had, I used it a grand total of once to try Infamous 2, and it looked horrible and ran horrible, so I really had no reason to keep that subscription going forward, so I don't really care about that being a benefit on PS Plus Premium. I'm never gonna use it. And then selling us game demos, like, come on, really? Like, that's not a benefit. That's just you paywalling something that really should be free. I think it's cool that Sony forces every developer to make a two hour game trial version of their game so people can get an idea of what that is. But uh, Steam has that too. If you play a game for under two hours, you can get a full refund for it within a certain period of buying it. So it's not really that big of a deal when you consider you get that for free on Steam. The biggest issue I have is with this classic games library. The games that are there, like Ape Escape on PS1, for example, they genuinely look and run the best they ever have, which is great. The problem is uh, there just aren't enough games. Sony hasn't been releasing them in big batches. It's been small 
batches every month, and the stuff they're releasing honestly is nothing to write home about. They're missing some huge games. On the PS1 side, the only games worth writing home about, I think, are Ape Escape, Hot Shots Golf, and Resident Evil Director's Cut. I don't know why you would play Resident Evil Director's Cut when the remake exists, but it's nice to know that it's there. The PSP side is super lacking. You get Loco Roco, which I guess is like a cute game. If you've never tried it, it's worth at least messing around with for an afternoon. And then you also get Super Stardust Portable, which is honestly the worst version of that game. The PS3 version is much better, and so is the Vita version. So the fact that we're missing incredible games like the three God of War PSP games, Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops, Metal Gear Acid, Metal Gear Acid 2, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, MotorStorm, Arctic Edge, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories, Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. Like I could name so many PSP games, Resistance Retribution. All of these games should be on this service day one and they are nowhere to be found. And even though we get more games on the PS2 front, things don't really get all that much better. The issue is literally every game on the list I just mentioned has been upscaled and cleaned up for the PlayStation 3 and sold in a bundle of up games. So the fact that we're getting like a cleaned up PS2 version instead of these better PS3 versions blows my mind. So yeah, just taking a quick look at the entire list of classic games, there is nothing here to really write home about. And honestly, it's kind of embarrassing that the selection is so small for how much more or you have to pay to get this inclusion in the first place. Honestly, I wish they waited and just held this feature back until they had PS3 and at least Vita emulation running on the PS5 so that they could release a bigger batch of games, but also across a wider variety of consoles. Eventually, we're probably gonna get PS3 and Vita emulation, but it's not here now. So as it stands, I don't think PS Plus Premium is worth paying for. It's 20 bucks more for the year, but it's 20 bucks I don't think you need to spend right now unless you're really seeing yourself using the game trials or there's something screaming at you from this classic games list, but still you can buy a huge chunk of these classic games individually and keep them in your account forever. And if you have PS Plus Premium, yes, you can try them whenever you want, but if you stop paying, those games go away. So me personally, I'll just buy the ones you wanna play because the list of actually good games is so small on this service. I know it seems kind of weird that I'm penny pinching over $20, but you can get some really good games for just $20 on the PlayStation Store right now. And I just personally think that $20 would be better served picking out a cool game like Hollow Knight or Shovel Knight instead of giving it to Sony for a year of a service you're probably not gonna even take advantage of. So if there's one area I think this PS Plus system as a whole could be improved, it's in that classic games department. That really seems like an afterthought that was tacked on by Sony at the last minute because they were like, dang, we really wanna have three tiers here between essential, extra, and premium. And we need something small to round out the whole premium upgrade system because people are going to look at the trials thing and be like, oh, you're charging me 20 bucks a year extra to play demos of games, and rightfully so. So they tacked on emulation at the last second, and you can really tell that's what happened because these are the three easiest PlayStation consoles to emulate between the PSP, the PS1, and the PS2. If they had PS3 emulation, I would say pay 40 bucks extra a year to get this because I've been waiting for that for a long time. There are so many games that I wanna play from that generation between Infamous 1 and 2, Killzone 2 and 3, the Resistance trilogy, like the list goes on and on of games that Sony is just leaving stranded on their PS3 generation console. Like the list goes on and on of games from the PS3 generation that are absolutely incredible and it just sucks that Xbox has more playable Metal Gear games than the PlayStation 5. By paying $70 for games up front, we get better quality games in the long run. And I am happy to buy my games day one if that's going to be the case going forward. And if it's not something you really wanna play day one, you can always wait until it's on sale for 20 or 30 bucks. So out of all the different options between PS Plus Essential, Extra, Premium, and Game Pass, I think the best value in the entire industry that you can get right now, where you're gonna get the best served by a huge library of great games is PlayStation Plus Extra.